What is up, lads, and welcome back to another episode of the Pez Universe podcast. We're back, Wes. We're back talking Pez. I know a lot of people when we put out the UFL podcast were worried we weren't going to be doing Pez podcast anymore. But look, we're back. We're going to be keep doing the Pez podcast. And as we said in the last episode of the UFL podcast, if you haven't checked that out already, we're going to be kind of cross-referencing these quite a bit because we will, you know, have overlapping points. Um, we're going to be talking when we get some news. And we actually did get some news on a on a, on a Friday night with no warning, as Konami like to do. Just drop it like it's hot and uh, announce, you know, a fairly big kind of announcement, really, um, that... I mean, it's, it's sure to sure to make a lot of people happy. I mean, I know it's kind of blasphemous at the moment, Wes, to 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 talk about anything slightly positive because you know, and deservedly so, the game is, you know, is pretty pretty in a bad in a bad spot at the moment, gameplay wise and the release and stuff. But this is news, so I mean, we do kind of have to cover it um, to keep people up to date. Um, I mean, what's what's your thoughts, Wes? Welcome, welcome into the podcast. I never give you an introduction. But, uh, no, you, you've just, you've just. Yeah, man, I'm up. just straight in. I'm just straight right, in. That's, that's just, like, like ah, we'll just, we'll stop, we'll stop the intro in Wes now because it's, yeah. like, it's just not important. You're just, you're just um, like no, old furniture now. You're just always uh, there. You know? <laughs> well, in terms of news, I mean, uh, yeah, all right, yes, we've been limited on our to, uh, in our news. Uh, the point you made there in relation to the to the reception of of the game, mm. it's relatively we've you know it's been you know it's been absolutely smashed to death at that mm. point i mean you know in terms of actual news i think i even said it pre-podcast like it's actually quite nice to actually have something that yeah some team like, just talk about like yeah because i think the last the last real kind of big-ish i would say announcement was when they said they'll be partnering up with the, the kind of the u.s federation mm. and its players to use the likenesses and and things of like that so again people were then immediately going well does that mean that we're now getting full mls it's like no we're giving it kind of essentially fake league mls yeah, which yeah. again is is great news if you are uh, an editor it's great news mm-hmm. if you are a fan of the mls um and, it's like the fifa pro license basically for the yeah MLS, and then yeah. full license partnership exclusive for the mx like the mexican league so yeah and the fact that they've bolted <laughs> on or at least they've obviously made a partnership with Liga MX. Mm. So the the reason why I say it as a bolt on is that it's a natural kind of progression. Yeah. As in, you've got the MLS, you've now got Liga MX. That's quite a solid base mm. in terms of uh, in terms of eFootball's market that they're probably going to go to. I was asked the question um, in, in a live stream I was doing in relation to where I felt that eFootball's kind of major markets are going to be, and I think it's in two places. I don't think it's mainland Europe. I think that the two big places. You've got the Far East, your likes of you, obviously, Japan is where obviously Canabia base. You've mm-hmm. got, you know, China, Thailand, Malaysia, though, that region. Um, and then the other big one is the Americas. You know, uh, you look at, you know, the US, you look at Canada, you look at South America more, more in particular, where the mm-hmm. game is huge. Yeah. You know, your Brazil, Argentina, obviously Mexico, uh, Chile, all of that type of region. Absolutely love massive, the yeah. pants off. Especially of, on mobile of, as well. Like, it's, it's massive yeah. over there. Yeah, and of course, with that kind of advent of, of PES Mobile or, or the, the kind of fusion of eFootball, which will mm. then be kind of cross-platform, again, it's a, it's a shrewd move, I would say, from Konami to make that leap because, you know, it's it, in a weird way, it is kind of telling people, yeah, look, we understand our market more than you think we do. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, all right. That's, that's we a can, great point, we can, Brilliant point. Yeah, I mean, yes, we can, we can, you know, me and you, or one of us, whoever is the more vocal at that point in time, we can, we can turn around and be like, we disagree with the, you know, the the way that, um, or the the direction it's going. Mm. But for the for the direction they're going, they are honing in on things that are going to get people excited. You know, we only have to look back a couple of years to when you know they were on their world tour of going around different regions and mm. there were an empty legends in every different place yeah. and the buzz that Batistuta got and the buzz that Salas and Zamorano got and the buzz that Adriano got and mm. all of these different little kind of tidbits yes we might not necessarily know the extent of how these partnerships are going to work but the fact they're at least going in that direction mm. it's a smart play because if you are like you said if you're leaning into mobile or if you're leaning into, even into console you can at least turn around in the Americas and go, hey, guess what, guys? We know you've got other options are available, but actually we've got, you know, the basis of an MLS. We've got the basis of a Liga MX. 
you know, who knows? They might go and get the is it the Brazilian? Oh, I'm going to butcher the uh, the pronunciation, but the Brazilian league, the Brazilian Real. Yeah, I, I want to go with. Too. I was I was close. I'm not going to attempt close. it anyway, so that's good enough for me. But then you've got you know you've got the Argentinian league and yeah. things like that. Are they going to go down the route and try and get all of those individually licensed? Because yeah, again, again, yeah, I mean, know, like, again, again I, I think, it's a great point, like that you made there, because I think sometimes, and it's something that we've even. I don't know, we don't really talk about it too much, but you hit the nail on the head there that like there's two ways of looking at this is that like you've got the development team which are in control of the game and developing the game and building the gameplay features and you know when information goes out and what they show and all that sort of stuff is controlled by I don't know, like whatever like version of the game they have or how updated the game is at the moment or whatever like that. And then you've got like the marketing team or the licensing team who are like working on these things and you know they're not they're not the same like teams like they're basically different teams working on different things so like i saw tweets go up today and like rightfully so in a way that people were like oh what does this matter you know you can't even play e-football against a friend online and, yeah, all this. and it's like well that's that's kind of a separate issue you know the, the issue at the moment is like the gameplay if you download e-football at the moment like gameplay wise and actually playing it is it's in an undefendable state like even you know the biggest supporters of the series like such as myself would say like that it's severely lacking from a gameplay point of view but yeah. something like this is a huge step in the right direction i think for when part, they actually yeah. do get the gameplay to the point which they will there'll yeah, be those are listening tonight that don't think that might ever happen and there'll be those thinking that yeah it will that, happen you know so yeah. And, and we've said this before that the that that point a is a valid point, but b it's still yet to be improved. And yes, we can all sit there and go, well, historically this hasn't happened. Mm. Until it actually happens, it, yeah. then you know you're only going off of your past experiences. I know I've echoed that point many a time on the mm. podcast. Is you know we are reinforced by what has happened prior. Um, I think you know from from my analogy, it's like having to go at the guy that makes your book flurries because your Big Mac isn't isn't mm. done properly. <laughs> Like yeah. it's like what 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 does the guy who makes the McFlurries have to do with the the you know so from a from a marketing and partnership perspective, yes, Konami and eFootball are doing a very good job from that perspective because you know we tend to forget that they only have a finite amount of licenses that they mm. can play within. As we know, competition go yeah, on course. exclusivity, kind of essentially ring fence it with how much money they put into those yeah. licenses. And then as a result, you've kind of left to, well, we'll just kind of see what we can get a hold of. Mm. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of the kind of the UFL side of things where people might be wondering, well, does that mean that UFL are now going to start to pinch licenses? Or are leagues and teams going to probably look at stuff and go, well, actually, we don't want to be exclusive because yeah. when you think about it, rather than making one pot of money, you could go and make three or four different pots of money. So for the likes of, say, Celtic, Rangers... Um, uh, kind of West Ham or whoever, whoever mm. the case may be of any of those teams or any new teams that could be coming on, instead of them being exclusive partners, they're going, well, hey, actually, we've licensed ourselves out to be in this game. We can license ourselves out to be in three or four. Mm. So I think, obviously, if people have access to league licenses, it makes it a lot easier to get hold of teams, mm. which is why I think Konami are kind of in this zone now of going... Well, actually, let's just try and take a league or two here and then mm. we'll try and get some kind of marquee clubs to go alongside it. Mm. And I think that's kind of where the, the the partnership kind of cogs are starting to turn a little bit. And as you said, it does put them in a nice position for when, you know, 1.0 comes out or, when, yeah. you know, whenever, you know, the spring update. As, as on, yeah, whatever, whenever that, out. like, that's the thing. They're building, I think they're now starting to build a plan in place like that again. You know, it's it's so easy to criticize, and this this podcast when we're talking about it here, like I think the gameplay has been left to the side when I'm saying all this stuff just to kind of you know like talk. Yeah, about I th- the, when the we're ideas talking about what's this, coming. you know, yeah, like it's well, easy it's easy kick it like and say the gameplay is this, the gameplay is that, like yeah, like we you know we get that, like leaving that aside. I think myself that you know ufl came out and we'll get into this in you know this week's episode of the ufl podcast as well like where we'll talk about kind of what we think you know what we thought of the reveal and the partnerships and stuff but i think like konami came out came out today and they're like okay look our strengths are in this market or in this market like 
they released financials there, what was it, like a couple of days ago? And like they've yeah. grown, they've grown their profits again with literally no like title released in the last, what, couple of years apart from Pez. Like I know Yu-Gi-Oh has gone free to play now as well. They've started um, releasing NFTs as well, which yeah. I know, it, well, it's not that's a, a whole zone. different podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not really a zone that I know very well. Yeah, I, I'm not, not a massive, massive yeah. uh, expert on it either. But, but that's the thing, man. I mean, like, they're going into they're they're the, the the markets that they're doing well in like and the markets that they have the most growth in like they are actually nailing down like proper licenses here where it's like well okay like if you want if you're a fan of the mexican league and it mightn't be of interest to me or you personally I'm not saying it isn't but it may not be to us european based guys but the south american guys would be like this is actually massive like this is a game yeah. changer for me to give Pez or to give eFootball another chance that it was in my rear view mirror and now it's like, oh, I want to play with my favorite, you know, club from Mexico or yeah, MLS also, with all the players. You want to play with Tigres and, or you want to yeah. play with Unam or whoever the case may be or, you know, or Tijuana or whoever, whoever, you know, it is that's there. Showing off your football but, knowledge now just to see, uh, see it comes, that. Like, it, comes, it comes, it comes, it comes, <laughs> it comes and goes, it comes and goes. Um, but no, I think, I think, you know, yeah, as you said, if you if you look at this in isolation, if you look at it in silos, it's very simple. You, you can leave the gameplay one off to the side because that that is has been the way it's been for some time now. It's not going to change. Yeah, no until they update you, the gameplay, we not, can't like we can't yeah, talk about. No matter how many I mean, times that you slam dunk it, it's not going to change the fact that it's it's the way that it is mm. for right now. Whereas from that partnership and marketing perspective, you can at least applaud them and say. But you know what? Yes, all right, it might not be my favourite league. It might not be League 1, or it might not be Serie A, or it might not be the Premier League. But football is a world is a worldwide game, and video games have worldwide appeal. So what might not, as you've said, what might not be the, the thing that's top of my list, it might be completely different to, uh, you know, to somebody who lives in South America or somebody lives in Mexico or somebody lives in the U S or somebody lives in the far East, yep. that might be a completely different metric. And, you know, as we've constantly said, you know, these decisions are based on metrics. Yep. These are going to be, these are going to be defined on what, what's their hit markers or what's their markers. And granted, they're never, they're never going to tell us what those markers are, but mm. I would imagine or I'd like to think, not imagine, I would like to think that there is somewhere within Konami's team that they're going, right, we need to hit X KPI, Y KPI, and Z KPI. Yes. As long as we hit those three KPIs, we're, we're fine. And, and and that is essentially how I would imagine they work as a business. Mm. Now, this would have lit up Liga MX or Mexican fans or just South America in general because then, as I've said, you then have the buzz of people from Argentina going, well, they're going to do the same for the Argentinian League. Mm. And either so they Brazil might, like, going, they might, are they going to... They're already licensed in PES 21, obviously. You know yeah, I mean? are, they, so... are, they going to, are they going to do the same for Brazil? Are they going to try and make some type of agreement with Copa Libertadores? Like, Maybe again, they, yeah. Get that license you know I mean? back. Yeah. Like, granted, you know, granted they, might, they might be under exclusives with FIFA, I'm not quite sure. But th it, that's the kind of conversation that then comes down the pike, which is then... Do you know what? Give us another one. Give us another one. Give us another one. Yeah. And like you said, they, they are shrewd enough to know what pots that they can play in, mm -hmm. you know, and they're shrewd enough to know what they've got to do within those pots. Mm. And and they're existing, they're ex like we said, they're existing in a finite pool of licenses because until exclusivity, I would imagine, finishes on certain deals and unless those leagues or clubs go... Actually, we don't want to sign up to this next time. Yeah, you're not going to see it branch out into other games, which is a shame. But I would like there to see there to be like a, a bit from the clubs and the leagues to go. Hey, actually, for our licensing, we can actually get three three streams of revenue or four streams of revenue. We don't really need to go down this uh, kind of ring fence type of mm. way of doing things. Yeah, but man, the thing about it is right as well, and like, I'm I'm actually I'm actually glad with the news again leaving the current state of the game, like, to the side, right? If this was just, a, you know, a, a normal year that PES 2022 had released back in September and we were just playing, you know, a season update of PES 22 where we didn't really have much gameplay to, to talk about and we were all waiting for the Unreal Engine, like, this would be a huge announcement and I think it it's after, you know, like, I think myself, right, if Konami, 
if Konami want to take on this challenge, like they definitely can do it because like people go on Twitter and they think, you know, oh, there's, you know, there's no tweets, there's no marketing, there's nothing being put mm-hmm. out. But in the back, in the back of it, right, Konami like are up in their profits this year. They've had probably the worst launch ever of one of their flagship titles in Pez, where it's literally never been at a lower point in the community in terms of people's perception of it and where they where they see it going. It's at its lowest point since probably Pez 2008. And they haven't released, you know, they're sitting on a treasure chest of IP in Metal Gear Solid, Silent Hill, Castlevania, and they're still up in profits, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you can just imagine that if they want to take on this battle and say, you know, okay, look, we see you, UFL, we see what you're trying to do. Listen, this is our domain now like we're gonna take you on in this they have the money to do it they have the obviously you know they're after proven now that they're you know they have the ability to go and actually get like big licenses you know i mean i I know it's not a man city or it's not a real madrid or anything like that but like the league mx is a huge one for the pez community especially the editing community you know because now you can have an mls and a league mx that when master league does come you know, you're pretty much going to have two full leagues yeah. that are like massively followed here and, yeah. you know, all over South well, America. So, well, for example, for example, we only need to look at the kind of I, I remember way back when I first joined PES Universe and, you know, you'd look through the Twitter stream of when we'd go, oh, hey, so what leagues would you like to see us have next? Mm. First two are always on the list yeah. were MLS and, and, and Liga MX. Yeah. Those are always the first two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and obviously that kind of stands to reason yeah. realistically with with what we're seeing there because again the the kind of the flow is you know we're what five or six years down the line and it's still the first two that realistically people are probably going to ask for mm. outside of what they've already seen yeah I think I think uh, just to touch on a point which I know we'll probably even touch on in the in the UFL podcast which is I think there is so much residual. I don't want to say the word hatred because I think that's too strong, but there's a bitterness. Mm. That's probably the better way to look at it. Yeah, there's a a residual. People have been let down, man. I mean, there's there's no no doubt about that. Yeah, there's a residual bitterness to it. So the word, the anything, any news that comes out for, you know, for certain sections of of the community or game base at large, they're just gonna go, don't care, Mm. didn't ask, ratio. Yep. or whatever the kids yeah. say l like whatever you know what i mean like that or or they'll or they'll they'll fall into a category of going well I'm not really bothered because i'm not gonna play it or you'll have the 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 kind of the the audience that we are kind of speaking to realistically right now which is the people who are genuinely excited about this still mm. and genuinely are looking forward to or even just have of... a passing interest that they have yeah you know, they're fed up but they, they still have enough of an interest to click on a pez podcast and listen to what yeah, like we have to talk about in terms of like you know like i that's i i do agree with you like i i don't think anyone anyone is like happy with the current state of things like and we could do a podcast where we're complaining for three hours every week and we, just be well i was gonna say we've we've got several hours of yeah we've done that like we've done, yeah, that, we've done that since that. last september like you know so like i think yeah. that this is a thing of i think genuinely like as we look towards the future now and again it's back to me being glass half full which doesn't sit well with with people that are at that stage with the game that they're just like disinterested in it they don't think anything is ever going to be good again you know everything is dark like for me i think what they need to do now is to just like take their time it doesn't like if it's going to take another three months six months nine months like i think they just need to take their time now and put out something that they're proud of like do you know what i mean put out it, something it that needs, they feel it need, yeah it, it's, it it's, needs to be a, a solid base because yeah. of what they're changed to because of the engine change because of the generational console change it needs to be a solid base mm-hmm. because if they don't get the base right which as we've seen from their 0.9 0.91 yeah if they don't get the base right it is pointless building your your game on an on an unsound foundation mm because you, it just it just because then it becomes you know yeah you know, we've seen we've seen it with other games in terms of how patches affect games yeah it's only gonna make things worse and yeah. you don't given given well, their catch-up aren't you the minute you well, release given, something given like their that. run 
yeah, given their run up that they've had so far, and given how it's been and how it's panned out so far, mm. you then don't need a further misery compiler. You don't yeah. need something that they're going to just pile it on. So they need to get this base right. I think if there's any more kind of delays out the back end of this, not saying that there will be, I don't want to panic anybody by going, oh, well, where says there's going to be delays? But if there's any further delay between, I would say, if we, if, if, you know, I know the spring is a very vague term. Yeah, it's three right months, there. like it's March to me, or March to June. March to isn't June. It? Yeah. And so I'm that's like, and I'm like, window. I'm like, the World Cup in Guitars in like December, mm. like you might want to get a bit of a wriggle on. Like, uh, that, 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 I think that even in itself, I don't think people would be surprised if there was a delay. Mm. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's bitterness about it because there is a delay. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. No, but I mean, that's like, I think I, I agree with you. And like, again, it's, it's understandable for people to be annoyed by that. You know what I mean? Like, it's understandable. Like, I miss, it's mad. Like, I miss like the kind of, the structure of having like a new Pez game to edit, a new Pez game to talk yeah. about, a new Pez game to have content. Like, even if it's not the strongest title or the strongest, you know, in the series, um, you know, we've had a lot of kind of polarizing games released in the last five years. Some have loved some games, some have hated some games. It's still a buzz when a new Pez game releases where you're like, you know, like you're collaborating as a community to do something as we do, or we're talking on yeah. a podcast. And yeah. like you would miss that, like you'd miss that kind of buzz and you know, like well, just look, doing made, stuff and going to events yeah. and stuff, you know. Yeah, but, I was about to say I made I made the point on on my last stream where it was like the the impact. I was asked the question of do do you ever like miss not playing Pez anymore? Yeah, and I'm like, it's not necessarily that that it's the missing of playing Pez or e football that mm. is what I miss. You know, it's the going to events. It's those unseen friendships I yeah, would imagine exactly. behind the scenes yeah and I could I could rattle off a list of names of, of players who I would love to see again but mm. because obviously obviously what with the pandemic obviously happening yeah then obviously with this happening there hasn't been any engagement there hasn't been a you know oh well actually there's an event going on do you want to go do you want to go and do this this and this do you want to go and see x y and z you know you don't, you know, I don't get to see any of the pro players that I used to see. I don't get to see any of my broadcast colleagues that I used to see on a, on a very regular kind of basis. So it's just like, for me, it's just a bit like, well, ah, that those are the bits that you kind of miss. And it's, mm. the, it's those hidden bits that people don't really see. Yeah. And that, and that for me is the kind of the kicker, which is just like, yeah, I miss, I miss the game being in a, a playable state for me. And I miss it being an enjoyment for me. But then I also miss out on the enjoyment of going to events and doing all of these random things that I get that I got I got to do at mm. the back end of playing the game. So mm. yeah, yeah true, you know, I, I think everyone's feeling everyone's feeling the pinch. Mm. I think everyone's feeling the pain of this game not being where it needs to be. But I think in terms of what like we said, from a from at least from a partnership point of view, they're in the right direction. Mm -hmm. In the sense of if they go and pick up a couple more now. For example, if they went, say, for example, they went and and did something with the Bundesliga, you know, that mm. could be something that could come down the pike where it's like, well, we're getting people's hopes up, boys. Now, come on. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If they, if they, if you know, if they then went, oh, actually, by the way, we've we've gone and made an agreement with the German FA mm. or, or the FIFA Pro counterpart of the German FA, mm. and now you can get a full, you know, a full Bundesliga. Yeah. Again, that would set some excitement about the place because again, it's then oh okay, well I didn't actually expect them to be able to do that. Mm. If they did, great. If they don't, obviously they don't. But I think. Yeah, but even if they, they... had like second league, second divisions. And yeah, stuff, man, that's yeah, a huge second thing divisions. As well, yeah, second know? divisions because people love doing master leagues in loads yeah. of different and with different tiers ways. and different you know promotion and relegation. It's, and... it's just about it's just about where can Army now move their pieces from yeah. a, from an e football perspective. It's now how you move your pieces because. Okay, you've been radio silent. You haven't really put anything on social media about outside of those polls, which I've seen various different ways of responding to them. Just now, move your pieces accordingly. Move them correctly. Don't don't take any missteps and just move them slowly. Mm. And and hopefully, we will get something that reminds us a little bit of a of a Pez game, but yeah, obviously dressed up in an e football fashion. Like it's out. Like it is out there. I don't know. Will we ever see like? I'm still getting, you know, I'm still getting like ridiculed for the Windsor build and all that sort of stuff, you know, because 
Like at the end of the day, we played what we yeah, played. That's it. That's a unicorn. That's gone. yeah. But that's what I mean. Like I don't know will we ever see that. Like, yeah. But... Again, it's like it's like as much as as much as I I love the takes from there. At the same time, it's like the the, the build hasn't been there. Therefore, yeah, that hasn't been publicly released. Therefore, like so. therefore, therefore, it, it, it's 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 um it's a fugazi. It's mm. it's not there. It's but not, I do think not... that like if you know if when whenever they do release it, I think. Even if people are saying like, no, I'm gone, like I'm literally I'm never going to give them another chance. Like I still think people will give it a chance and play it. And if it's not for them, it's not for them. And I think you know, so, but I think that's, that's the nature that's that's the, it's that's just video the nature games, of, isn't it? Yeah, it's the nature of video games. It's the risk you take when you make your game free to play. Mm. Yeah, and I think I think people will try it. And especially now if they keep building up this sort of stuff and announce a couple of more bits and pieces, announce different things at different times, like you know they can still turn it around. I think it, it's 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 going to be a massive like it's going to be a massive battle to to, yeah. to turn it around. But I think I think if I'm if I'm them or as kind of almost like a final thought for me at least. Yeah, um, man, yeah. If 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 I were them and I was in their box seat, maybe I'd say maybe a month or so before re- release comes down the pike, they actually give us a trailer that's like gameplay. Yeah. Like as, in like, as in full on yeah, yeah. here's a here's a 10 to 15 minute match here's uh, and you maybe have some narration over the top of it as in not the monotone gentleman that we had before but mm. people talking you through the aspects and how they change yeah no text know, on the screen no text on the screen i don't want it to be like return of the jedi i just want it to just be like <laughs> yeah. it just it just for the gameplay itself to talk and for you to just kind of Throw in bits of going. Well, actually, here's, you know, here's our new shoot mechanic. Here's how you yeah, pull it off. Exactly, here's, yeah. this, here's that. Here's the other. And, and don't make it as kind of set PC as as we've seen. Yeah, I agree, man. Well, look, it's a, it's kudos to them. I mean, it's finally a good bit of news. I mean, it is a bit of news um, that we have a bit of content to talk about, and I think it's 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 only a positive for me. Like, it's a positive for me to. Uh, yeah, no one's sitting there going, "Oh well, they they got the Liga MX." There. Yeah, <laughs> and oh, oh well, that's that's terrible. That's yeah. awful. Oh no, that's awful. That's a wrong, that's a wrong move. It's like no, it's more licenses. It's yeah, more, well, it's just something it's different, like as well. That like at the end of the day, people are always going to have opinions on it. Like we all have our own opinions, but like, it's it's something, you know. And I think I think when they do something right, like you do probably have to talk about it and say, yeah, well, like, look, this was a good announcement. I mean, League MX tweeted out about it and they were, they had a few more details about the 3D scans of the players and the stadiums. And obviously all the details aren't out at the moment, but you know, they talked about the esports scene, amateur scene, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, man, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's something, I mean, it's something, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll kind of end it there um, because we are going to, do this week's episode of the the ufl podcast as well um back to back because we're we're (laughs) we're good like that but um feel like james cameron shooting avatar back to back you know but um (laughs) yeah we'll do that and uh we'll we'll kind of talk about a couple of more bits and pieces but yeah man i think we ended there short and sweet we've covered everything um be interested to to see what people think in the comments below on youtube or wherever they're listening to it on any of the 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 places you know i think we're on everything pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast now we're on um as sep would say we get you on a an eye an eye an eye pillow is that what he used to say before <laughs> but uh yeah yeah man so yeah we'll end it there um hopefully we'll have some more news soon but um yeah that's pretty much it man finally a bit of positivity a bit of positive news for a change um so yeah we will be back next week hope you guys enjoyed the show and uh yeah keep positive i suppose guys we'll see you next time (laughs) we'll see you next time (laughs) all right peace